let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter 1. You're very familiar with these set of scriptures, I'm sure. We've been talking about the kingdom, the kingdom of God for the last couple of Sundays. And uh, we're going to continue along that line, but in just a little bit of a different direction. In John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word. Now, I'm going to change that a little bit because we're going to say this. In the beginning was God. In the, the beginning of all things. God himself, I, I don't understand it. God himself, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit never had a beginning. But in the beginning of all creation was the Word. Or in the beginning of all creation was God. Or in the beginning of all creation was the King say the king was the king see every kingdom has a king now we we live we don't live in a democracy we live in a constitutional republic thank god for a constitutional republic and that means we're not underneath the thumb of a king now in the old covenant and in many countries of the world the word of the king is law it is law Matter of fact, among the, the, the Medes and the Persians, we realized that when the king declared a thing, he could not even change it himself. That's why when the enemies of Daniel were out to destroy him, they got the king to foolishly sign an edict that said for the next 30 days, I think it was, everybody had to bow down and worship him and they couldn't pray to another gods. And, of course, Daniel was not going to submit to that king. He was going to submit to the king of kings and lord of lords. And uh, so he kept bowing down towards Israel, towards the temple, praising God. Of course, he was reported. They arrested him. And the king, of course, was so sad that he had done that, but he had already gave his word. See, and if that's a natural king, then how about God? God is not a man that he should lie. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? The word of the king is law. So in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was God. In the beginning was the king. And what does it say? And the word was with God. And the word was God. Or you can say the king was with God. And the, word, and the king was God. Say the king is God. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you go to the end of the book, the book of Revelation, there is written upon him, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings and King of Lord of Lords. We as Americans, we can't really grasp what it means to be a king. But how many of you were in the military? Could I see your hands? Just lift your hands up real high. Let me see your hands, everybody. I mean... Go ahead, Teddy. Put your hand up. Thank God for those who have been in our military. Can you say amen? One thing we, I don't know about today in the military. I come from a long military line. Uh, I've got a famous uh, distant relative by the name of Chuck Yeager. Some of you have heard of him. He broke the sound barrier. Uh, my uncle Gilbert, he was a retired uh, Air Force officer. My dad was Air Force Navy. Uh, my cousins have been Army. I was in the Vietnam War. My dad was in during the Korean War. I was during the Vietnam War. I wasn't there. My, a lot of my cousins went to Vietnam. My two, my, my two brothers were Army. My sister is Air Force, and I was Navy. And, and we were raised, you might say, in a military home. And my dad, I, I tell you, he, he built something within us that we've lost now. And, and I can honestly tell you, though I wasn't a Christian, I can never remember a time when my dad spoke and I didn't say yes sir we've lost that yes sir I still up to this day I get around people with authority and many times I'll say yes sir and, and I'm not saying blind obedience when something's wrong something's wrong but I'm saying that authority that 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 place of authority and submission to that authority. Understanding authority and power. You, you understand that authority and power goes hand in hand together. Authority and power. We, we, we have many, many promises in the Word of God. Many promises. 
And all the promises in Christ are yea and amen. Now, it seems to me the modern day church, we want the power and we want to operate in authority, but we don't want to submit to authority. Now, I'm talking about the authority of God this morning, the authority of the king. That's the authority I'm talking about. Though God has established lines of authority, actually the Bible says those in government, godly government is a threat to the evildoer. Godly governments are not a threat to the righteous, but to the evil. And they yield not the sword in vain. That's what it says in the book of Romans. Paul said that. Authorities are established of God. In the home, there is authority. It's supposed to be the father or the husband, the dad, the wife. I was raised with that. I, I, I knew my dad was a man of authority. And when my dad said to do something, we did it. We were just raised with that conviction, that understanding, that perception. Anarchy is when you no longer recognize authority. You don't recognize somebody has a right to tell you what to do. That's anarchy. Anarchy says, you're not telling me what to do. You're not telling me how to live my life. You're not telling me how to think, how to dress, how to walk. That's that's anarchy. And, and who's the father of anarchy? Satan's the father of anarchy. And, 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 and what does that do? Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So the end results of not submitting to righteous authority is death. It brings death. It brings, whether it be physical death, emotional death, relationships. How many marriages have been destroyed because... In the home, they don't understand authority. I'll say this, Mom. It's not about women submitting to the husbands. But it does say, wife, submit yourself to your husband. says, I'm to the Lord. For in other words, my wife, many, many years ago, we were just basically newlyweds. One day somebody called up, and I, I really didn't want to get on the phone with this person. And, my wife, and, and I said to my wife, tell him I'm not here. I did. I told him. Uh, and I'm sure you would have never done something like that, but just tell them I'm not here. I could have just said, listen, tell them I can't talk right now. And, and why can't you talk? Because I don't want to talk. But I said, tell them I'm not here. And my wife looks at me, and she says to me, she said, honey, I'm not lying for you. How many know that's right? So I'm not teaching an authority where you break the authority of God's word. But, but, but let me tell you something. Mom, if you don't submit to the authority of your husband when he... What he's telling you is not contrary to the Bible. It's going to get into your kids. And your children, they're not going to submit to you. Because, because that's how God set this thing all up. And, and the other day, my wife and I were coming down the road from Gettysburg, and we were talking spiritual things. And out of my mouth came, came this. Out of my mouth. I believe it was perfect. How many know that sometimes God can put a word in your mouth? And out of my mouth came this. The word... Or this is what came to me. The king has spoken. I heard a finality. The king has spoken. What, what the king has spoken. Yeah. And what, what has the king said? Right here. The king of kings and the lord of lords has spoken. And we, will, we, we are going to discover some things because out of sight, out of mind. It's like the parable when the king called his servants and he gave one a, a pound and gave another one two and gave another three. And he says, I'm going to go to a distant land. And when I come back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to require an accountability to you of what I've given you. And, 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 and we hear this lopsided message of love so much, we don't understand the other side. We, we don't understand that, that yes, he, he, he may be our, our savior, our shepherd, our lover, our friend. He, he's all of these things plus many more, but he's also our king. And the word of a king law. And when the king says, jump. Remember, how many ever played the old Simon Says game? Any of you ever played that when a child? I don't know if they play that anymore. It's probably not politically correct, you know. Simon says jump. Simon says spin around. Simon says, uh, uh, Simon says sit. Simon says lift your hands. And, and we used to play that as our kid, as a kid. Uh, and, and, and I want you to know, the king has said. Listen to this now. 
the king has said. You know, that's why throughout the New Testament, it does not just talk about the fact that God is love. God is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And God has the right to be heard and obeyed. Parents have the right to expect their children to obey them in the Lord. Just like wives, you do have the right to expect your husband to love you like Christ loves the church. But you found out something, you can't make him do it. <laughs> and wives, your husband should have the right to expect you to submit to his authority as long as it doesn't contradict the Bible, the nature, the character of God. But I want you to realize we live in a time of anarchy where nobody wants to submit to anybody and everybody is a king unto themselves. Now, we may be under the misconception because judgment does not come right away. Because the minute we disobey the king, see, and you stop and think about this. Now, this is some serious issues we want to talk about this morning and tonight. Because I'm going to tell you something. Many in the body, they want authority and power. But what they don't understand is the authority and power you operate in will be in the same level of authority that you submit to God to. You submit to God, it says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about submitting to a pastor except to where he's in line with the word of God. Pastors were never meant to control people's lives. What we were sent to do, apostles, prophets, advances, pastors, and teachers, we were sent to wash your feet, to teach you the truth, and to lead you into the ray of righteousness. That's it. And, and, and it's not for filthy gain shape. It, it, the Bible says that. It says that, that we are shepherds under the the the, the the chief shepherd, the bishop of our soul, and don't do it by constraint. Don't do it because God's just requiring you to. Do it willingly, cheerfully, and don't do it for filthy lucre's sake. For no words, don't do it for money. I, I wouldn't want to be in this pulpit unless God called me to be. Uh, man didn't call me, God called me. Paul said that. He said, the Lord chose me for my mother's womb. I don't understand why. He, I think he wants to use the foolish to confound the wise. But he is submitting to the king. Submit yourself to the king. Uh, there, there's a, a centurion one time who was, uh, I think he had like a hundred men under him. A Roman centurion, his servant was sick. And um, he uh, sent to Jesus, said, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, okay, I'm coming. And, and the certain church responded and said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Now, a Roman centurion who considered the Jewish people as nothing but rubbish, he had a revelation that Jesus was a king. And he, he said this, Lord, I'm not worthy. Now, he could have been... Uh, uh, they could have court-martialed him or got him as a traitor the minute he said Jesus was Lord. And Jesus said some very profound things. He says, who is my mother, my brother, my sister, but they that do the will of my Father in heaven, or let's say it this way, them who submit to the King, of, the, King the ultimate Lord, God himself, the Father. He says, who is my mother, my brother, my sister, but they that do the will of my Father in heaven? And why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? And the centurion said to Jesus, I'm not fit for you to come to my house. He said, but speak the word only. Say the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. The king made all things, and he's coming again. You don't see him, but he's already been high and lifted up. Peter said angels and authorities and principalities and powers are made subject to him. In the book of Hebrews, it says we have not yet seen everything under his feet, but we will, but we see Jesus high and lifted up. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess, whether it be now or in the future, every human being that has ever lived will bow its knees to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus gave us a warning. He said either you can fall on the rock and be broken. Because that's what happens when you come to the king. You've got to be broken. 
Broken what? Broken of your rebellion, your disobedience, your hardness of heart. And I'm talking about Mike Yeager too. I'm going to do it my way. Frank Sinatra. I'd like to ask Frank right now, how'd that work out for you? You're going to have to be broken. Smith Wigglesworth, who was a man mightily used of God, said he was broken thousands of times. What do you mean broken? Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will. You know why men are not meek? Do you know why us men are not meek and kind and gentle and long-suffering and forgiving and patient like Jesus was? Because we're not submitting to the authority of the king. I remember back some years ago, I thought it was 2005, but I've been writing a journal of my experiences, and I've put together everything, I, 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 every thought, every memory I can think that has of any importance, and from before I got saved, up to I got saved, up to present, and I've got like 800 experiences. <laughs> and I really didn't want to relive some of those experiences. Now, I'm not living in the past, but, but I, I look at my life and I realize that God had his hand on me. How many know that the king had his hand on you? How many know if the king took his hand off of you, you would be a goner? But, but I, I discovered that if I, and I, I was in, in 2003, and I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, you leave my daughter alone. Because I would harp at my wife. See, I didn't really do that with my sons. And my daughter, I did it with my wife. I was very controlling. Uh, maybe I was raised with that German mentality, you know, just really arrogant. And the Lord spoke to me, and the fear of the Lord hit me. He said, she's my daughter. Don't you treat my daughter that way. And I, and I said, Lord, what about her not submitting to me? He said, that's none of your business. <laughs> you submit to me. See, I, I was always taught this as a child. Keep your, keep your nose to your own grindstone. You all know what that means? That means you don't look around and find fault with anybody else. You pull the beam, pull the beam. There would be no gossip, no backbiting, no fault finding in the body of Christ if we would just deal with our own hearts. Now, when you get perfect, then you can deal with someone else. When you are completely surrendered and submitted and yielded and compliant. You know when it says, for all have sin and come short of the glory of God. What does that really mean? Well, all have sin. Say all have sin. Now Christ himself never sinned. What does that mean? That means for all have disobeyed the king. That's what sin is. Sin is disobedience to the authority that's over you. All have disobeyed the king. And what God, God sent his son to do, he that committed sin is of the devil. He that lives a life of sin is of the devil. And what did the devil do? The devil rebelled against God, didn't he? You all still here? I said the devil rebelled against God. And he led a third of the angelic host into mutiny. That's what we used to call it, mutiny in the Navy. Mutiny. And what did he do? He brought death and destruction everywhere he went, and he still is. And so now he has captivated the hearts of man to live lives of rebellion and disobedience. And we are being taught in the modern day church that the blood of Jesus covers all of your disobedience and your rebellion. And it is a lie. It is a lie. In whatever area we are rebelling against God's will and God's word. Uh, Thursday night I went over the commandments of Christ. I just mentioned briefly 50 of them. Just write them down. For instance, the king tells me, forgive. The king says forgive. Or you won't be forgiven. And in the Navy, military, we would give a salute. And that, that's in, a, in, in, our, in our modern vernacular, it would be a loud amen or so be it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And we ought to be saluting, and I'm talking to Mike Yeager, I need to be saluting God in every realm of my life. Because to the level I submit to God is to the level I will operate in God's authority and power. I'll say again, to the level that I submit to God. I don't care how much you pray. 
I don't care how much you confess the word. I don't care how much. I'm telling you now, prayer is a good thing because the Bible says pray without ceasing. Uh, a heart constantly, what? Submitted to God. What was Jesus? Jesus said this, 12 years old. And probably that one thing he said at 12 years old, the very first thing that Jesus spoke that you heard come out of his mouth until after he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, before that, he said to John the Baptist, suffer to be so, because John says, no, no, I ought to be, you ought to be baptizing me. And once again, Jesus said, suffer to be so, that the word of God might be fulfilled. And Jesus at 12 years old said to Joseph and Mary, know you not that I must be about my father's business. Don't you know what I'm here for? I'm here to do thy will, O God. It is written of me in the volume of books, it says that, in the book of Psalms and in Hebrews. I'm here to do thy will, O God, and that ought to be the cry of my heart. And to the extent that I get a revelation of that, because I know the king in, in the physical sense is not here right now, but he is here and he's within us. But when I get a revelation that he is my king and that he has the right to tell me what to... How many know everything this king does is for your benefit? <laughs> it's for your benefit. The king isn't telling you... Really, even good godly parents, they're not saying no to their children because they want to deny them the pleasure of fun. They're trying to stop them from destroying their lives. I mean, how many times did you chill, tell you? I remember Michael when he was real, real small. He'd go to try, touch the, the wood stove, and, and I would stop him. And then I even had to start slapping his hand. And one day I wasn't there. He learned his lesson real quick, man. He touched the hot stove, and I don't think he ever did it again. But I didn't want him to get blisters. I didn't want him to get hurt. I'm telling you what, the King of kings and Lord of lords, he, he doesn't want your marriage to fall apart. He doesn't want your finances to go down the tube. He doesn't want you to die early you got to submit to them for your own benefit I found out man when I started doing what the Bible says about husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church I mean I could quote I could quote the whole book of Ephesians to you when I was I had memorized it when I was 22 years old but you know what I wasn't doing it but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves and so the level of my submission to God. Now remember, when I talk about submission to the king, it, 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 it's not just, and it is, there is an aspect of divine fear here because Paul said this, knowing the terror of the Lord, say the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Says, hey, we, we, they didn't say knowing the love of God, but we know the love of God. Two sides of the road. When you came uh, to church this morning, you know there's a right ditch and a left ditch. And you stayed right in the middle. And straight is and, and narrow is the way. So we're not just preaching a, a message of the fear of God and the terror of the Lord. And we're not just preaching a message of love, 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 love. We're preaching the love of God and the fear of the Lord. And it will keep you right down the middle, the straight and narrow way. Knowing that God loves you, he'll forgive you. He died for you. The king rose again, took your sins, took your shame. He took your sicknesses and your diseases. He took your pains. But on the other side, he's coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on them that do not know God and that do not obey the king. That's what it says. Many, many Christians will weep and howl on the day of judgment because they were discovered they said they were God's people but they never submitted to his authority they never yielded to the king they never saluted and say yes sir Jesus said there is two sons and the father said to them go out in the field and work a father has a right to tell his sons to work go out in the field and work and the one son said I'll do it dad but he never went the other son said, I'm not doing it. But later on, he repented and he went. And Jesus said, which one was justified? The, not the first one, the second one. It's not what you just say, it's what you do. We need to submit to God. And as you submit to God, and as you surrender to God, as you yield your mind as instruments of righteousness, the devils and the demons will begin to tremble because... You, they'll see. And the centurion says, I, I'm a man of authority, Jesus. You don't have to come to my house. 
He said, speak the word only. Say the word only. Jesus, you don't have to manifest yourself to me. Just speak the word only. And the king has spoken. I said, the king has spoken. And if you can't do what the king has told you to do within the letters of this book, I don't care if Jesus physically appeared to you, you wouldn't do it. You got to do what he says. I guess my mind was, and, and don't, mis, don't misunderstand me because I submitted to my dad, but I, I did not respect natural authorities in the sense of I broke, I broke a lot of laws. As a matter of fact, I, I read an article and because I, I was just curious how many people are lawbreakers in America and how many people uh, for things they have done that were illegal if they would have been caught or they're involved in it would be in prison. And they said over 70% of all Americans would be in jail right now. Just drunk driving. How many? I mean, <laughs> I'd have been in jail. I was a lawbreaker from way back. Lawbreaker. And we're all God's. We're all breakers of God's law. Well, what's the difference between a man who breaks the law uh, 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 and gets away with it? A man who breaks the law and doesn't get away with it. Well, the guy who didn't get away with it got caught. But in the kingdom. We're all lawbreakers, and the difference between a, a sinner and a saint is a sinner has recognized his lawlessness. And he's fallen on the rock, and he's been broken. But the day will come when the one who doesn't repent, the Bible says, the rock will fall on them and will grind them into powder. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Now, don't misunderstand me. God's not out to get you. Because if God wanted to get you, he would have got you. And what I mean by that, if God wanted to squash you like a bug, he could have done it easily. But the day will come when we will stand before God. And he'll say either one or two things. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You obeyed my authority. You submitted to my kingship. How come we're not hearing this in the pulpit of every church in America? How come we're not warning people with fear and trembling that the, the, the gospel is not just a message of love. It is a message of obedience to Christ. Jesus said, follow me. Did you notice that? He was the king of kings. He was the line of the tribe of Judah, the seed of, uh, of Abraham. And when he came into this earth, he was the descendant, the rightful heir of the king of Israel. And he would walk up to people after he taught and he preached. And he said one simple thing. He spoke as a king. He spoke as a king. And I want to talk about the power of the words of the king. He spoke as a king. And this is what he said to them. He said, follow me. Period. Follow me. I, I don't know why my dad was a man and he had a lot of issues because he didn't know Christ. I did lead him to Christ. Don't know if he got right because he got bitter at me, got upset at me for saying, see, my home, our home was very private. We never talked about what went on in our home. And he got a hold of a cassette tape that I had preached in 1982 and I told on this cassette tape that my dad, he, he was an alcoholic and he'd come home and at times he'd my mom and my older brother and he got so highly offended at me from that moment forward I, 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 I probably was after 82 uh, because uh, right around that time he would never he would never talk to me again he refused to see me see now if he had been submitted to the king of kings and lord of lords even if I was wrong he would have forgave me tell your neighbor even if you're wrong I've got to forgive you you know why I've got to love you. See, God commands me to love my enemies. That, that's why what's going on in the church is, is, is it's, it's mutiny in the house of God. It's rebellion in the house of God. We, we, it's, it's a matter of submitting to Jesus. I love my wife. It, loving my wife is not a feeling or emotion, though they do come. I love my wife because God tells me to. God commands. My king says, you love your wife. I, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I have disobeyed the king through the years. But one reason, I, as a baby Christian, I saw this. I'm just going to say this. If you did it, then you can repent. At a later date, I never put my kids in public school. 
Why, Pastor? Because I heard the king say this. Raise your children in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart thereof. Now, I, I, I share, I, I talked about raising your kids. I remember back in 1987 in this church. Bless, uh, it says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And I preached that and used it. I said, Mom and Dad, those children ought to be raised under your direct care, and don't let the wicked and the ungodly raise your children, because the day will come when you will regret it. And now here it is, over 30-some years later, and I can tell you, every person I know that ever let the public school raise their children have gone through living hell. Why didn't you do, Pastor? Because I heard the king say, those children are your responsibility and you raise them. You know why I did that? Because I heard the king say. Now there's things I heard the king say and I've disobeyed. <laughs> I'm not laughing in the sense of it's funny. I'm laughing because it's stupid. How? Come on. Why would I disobey Jesus? I remember, I remember when I was a kid growing up, there was a black and white TV show. Remember, some of you old enough, uh, Father Knows Best. You all remember that? Father Knows Best. Or how about Leave It to Beaver? <laughs> always listen to Dad. Always listen to Mom. <laughs> but I want you to know, if we'll submit to authority, we, God will give us power. Power. I remember I got, got out of uh, Bible school with my wife. Came back to Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, went to Mount Union. Uh, I walked into, uh, it's called Byers. They made uh, Easter grass for Easter. And it was owned by a Jewish man. And I walked in there, and there's probably about maybe a hundred and maybe a hundred workers in that plant. Don't know if it's still there. And I was just on the assembly line, shoving, making sure the Easter grass was being shoved in the bags. and. But you know what? I, 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 what I did, I did is, is on to the Lord. And so I just was real. I wasn't trying to get a position. One day, all of a sudden, uh, the guy who was over shipping and receiving, I'm only 23 years old. The guy's going off to college. Uh, uh, Mr. The, Mr. Byers calls me into his office. And I preached Jesus to him. He knew I was a Christian. He was a Jewish man. But I preached Jesus to him. Not legalistically, just telling him how wonderful Jesus was. And that he came from the seed of Abraham. And I uh, had a little talk with him. And, and uh, it was a couple, probably a couple of weeks after that. He called me in one day and said, hey, listen, I need something done, Mike. I want you to uh, go up. I, I know you have a van. Pick up some equipment up in Pittsburgh. And so I did. I came back. And a couple of days later, he called me in. And he put me as a foreman. And so I left that until I started pastoring the Assembly of God Church. I was a foreman in that plant over shipping and receiving. Now, other people had been there for years. Why would he take a 23-year-old kid? and put me over shipping and receiving because he knew I knew how to take orders. You want power with God? Begin to submit to God. How? The fear of the Lord and faith that works by love. <laughs> it's both of them. Fear the Lord and faith that works by love. See, I have no problems with the fact that Daddy God loves me. But I also know that there's times in this doctrine that God's never mad at you, God's never upset with you, God's never angry at you, is one of the biggest bowls of vomit I've ever heard. I can show you the anger of the Lord through the whole Bible. Even Jesus got upset with his disciples. He loved them. And if any of you tell me I've never got angry with my kids, I'll tell you that you're a bold-faced liar. It didn't do away with your love for them, but you got angry. I know God gets, I don't know why that bothers me. I can't handle it, God gets mad at me. Well, you better handle it, because he does. Now, he doesn't do anything negative to you, but what you, you know what makes God angry? Is that because we won't obey him, we open the door to the devil to come steal, kill, and destroy. I'm telling you right now, if you'll discover that every area in your life where you are tormented, you are in rebellion to the king. What do you mean? I'm not a rebellion. I'm just worried. Well, didn't the king say, casting all your cares on me because I care for you? Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow would take care of itself. If a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. I mean, come on, man. There's 
So many things the king has told us to do. And why is he doing it, Pastor Mike? Because now you understand this morning, I'm really not preaching at you. I ought to have a mirror set up here, Bob, where I could see myself and I'd really preach that. Why? Because i got to talk to Mike Yeager. There's something rebellious in my flesh that doesn't want to be told what to do. There's something in my flesh that wants to do its own thing. And I know what it is. It's a satanic DNA in my flesh. In my flesh. Say, in my flesh. Not, not in the spirit of man, but it affects the soul of man. And I need to submit to God's authority. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So a king speaks. He says, is not my word like a fire that will consume the stubble and a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? And when you begin to submit, I'm telling you, when you begin to truly from your heart and cheerfully and with the fear of the Lord begin to submit to the word of God, it begins to bring heaven to earth. Why do you think he told his disciples, "Uh, thy will be done on earth. Where? Beginning where? In me. We pray that prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Doing the will of the Father our debts as we forgive our debtors. Don't lead us into temptation. Listen, don't surrender to temptation. What's the next step? Deliver us from evil. Did you get that? Don't lead us into temptation. Help me to submit to the king and not yield my mind, my eyes, my emotions, my words, my thoughts to the devil. And you will deliver me. You will deliver me. So if any of you have read any of my my books... I'm bragging on Jesus. You will see some astounding things I've experienced. It's directly connected to my submission to God. Directly connected. I submitted, not trying to get something, but just because when I first got born again, I know people who have been saved for 30 years and they still won't lift their hands during worship. And their attitude is, you ain't going to make me lift my hands. Well, that's because you don't. That's a sign of surrender. I surrender, God. Well, my hands won't stay up very long, Pastor Mike. Well, put them up as much as you can, and you'll find out they'll stay up longer. My, my, my lovely bride and I were, I don't know if we were really dating, but I, I was going to preach at the Mount Union Christian Center, which I had helped start with a guy. And one night it was my turn to minister. And Kathy and I go in there, and the worship wasn't, I'll be honest with you, it was terrible. Well, I'd worship God if the, if the worship service was better. No, you make a joyful noise to the Lord. I mean, the guy liked to pound on the piano and go on for hours, and the only one blessed was him. I'm not speaking evil, it's just how it was. But anyway, so we're in there, and I, 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 I'm going to worship God. I'm, I don't have a critical heart. He, he can play that piano better than I could sing better than I could ain't saying a lot but so I lift my hands up I'm praising God I'm just submitting to the king he said lifting holy hands without wrath or doubting see this is what I did as a baby Christian I simply submitted to God that's all I began to do if I read it in the Bible I said yes sir he said go to the house of God I went to a church he said pray I prayed he said witness I began to witness I, he said, dance. I found it in, in, in Psalms, dancing before the Lord, right? So I began in my little barracks until I found a church. A Pente- I found a Pentecostal church, not just any old church. I wanted a church that had some fire for God. Just a little neighborhood full gospel church on Adak, Alaska, a little military base. And uh, so I danced before the Lord in my barracks I would lift my hands I would make a joyful sound I would sing to the Lord I would pray why because I read it all in the Bible so I would share Christ next thing I know whoo here comes supernatural visitations angels dropped in the hell salvations casting out devils miracles of healing hernia sucking back in he just couldn't make that stuff up never knew that world existed and I fell into it by simply submitting to God 
I fell into it by simply out of love and fear because I first experienced the fear of God and then I, I, and, and I experienced his overwhelming love got up off the floor I knew in my heart don't put nothing wicked before your eyes got rid of all my pornography in the Navy there was a lot of pornography I don't know if there still is I'm sure it's worse got rid of my rock music I did it all by faith got rid of my cigarettes because I just knew by, by, in my heart that my body was the temple and now I neither did take care of it I'm just telling you what I did I just got up and I said enough with all this I'm in a new I, I didn't know this but I stepped into a new kingdom I could feel it I didn't realize it I didn't see any difference in my life but I got up off the floor took my drugs took my alcohol took my rock music took my pornography I took everything and I dumped it and I grabbed the Bible I grabbed the word of the king and I began to do it and here comes I mean I read in the Bible where it says you need the Holy Ghost in order to be a witness and I wanted to be a witness and I cried out to God at my bunk got on my knees never been around Pentecost and I said with my my speech impediment Lord I need the Holy Ghost please fill me with the Holy Ghost and it felt like somebody dumped oil in me I wasn't expecting a feeling of a and then all of a sudden up out of my belly came a brand new language and I began to speak in this heavenly language and when I got done my speech impediment was gone and I've never shut up I'm telling you, the church is going to come back into a place of submitting itself to God. The church, the bride's going to ask. You think Christ is coming back for a rebellious meism church? I'm going to do it my way? No, it's coming back for a church that's eager and, and excited about serving her, her groom, her king. I mean, everything, you know what amen means? It means yes, yes, Lord. And it's not a mealy mouth, yes, yes, okay. No, it's yes. We say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. So I, I, I began to move. I began, I began to experience the supernatural. I read, lift your hands. I lifted my hands. It's, not, it's nothing complicated. Simon says. Jesus says. The king says. Just do it. I began it right away. Listen, I, I know during the Obama years, it got, to, it got so bad in the house of God that you can't believe how many thousands of churches shut down. You know why? Because people stopped giving 10%. Stop. Immediately 10%. I love how Brother Gary Schaefer illustrates it. He'll take 10 corn seeds, right? Lay them in his hand, and he pulls one seed out. He says, look at all that's left for you. And each one of those seeds will produce a thousandfold. So when I got born again, in my heart, everything I had belonged to God. And I can, I can guarantee that I, 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 I've never just given a measly 10% to God. Never. I've always. You can ask my wife. There's many times when we emptied everything not just here I'm talking about needs we've seen and not once not once has the king of kings and the lord of lords ever failed me and matter of fact it's a privilege to give because God said God the king said whose word is law who cannot lie give and it shall be given unto you good measure press to press together and running over shall men give into your bosom I'm not doing this to get your money I've never done this to get your money I've got God's best can you shout amen, amen. so we'll close here I want you to think about this tonight we'll really get into a much greater detail if the Lord permits but think about this in the beginning Genesis Chapter 1, nine times, in the beginning, God said. Or let's say it this way, the king said. In the beginning, the king said. And the word of the king will never fail. 
In Genesis alone, over 90 times, it says, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, the king said, the king said, the king said, and everything the king has ever said, beloved, has come to pass. The king Jesus said, the son of man will be betrayed, but it's okay. He'll be crucified, but on the third day he will rise again. And the only ones who were there on that resurrection morning were women. <laughs> Thank God for our ladies. Thank God. Where would the church be? People say, well, where would we be with the women? We'd be in the garden. Oh, get out of here. If a woman was deceived, if Adam would not have ate from that fruit, we would have still been there. She was deceived. Adam was not. Adam rebelled against the word of God. People just don't see this. Thank God for the woman. I, I know pastoring since 1977, I've had way more women on fire for God than I've had men. Women who would pray. Women who would stand in the gap. Women who would cry out for souls. Women who would support. I cannot tell you through the years, and I'll say this in love, I've had so many women through the years come to me with tears and say, Pastor Mike, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving all that I get. I'm giving I'm more than tithing, Pastor Mike, but I can't get my husband to tithe. He just won't tithe. Just refuses to tithe. Let, let me tell you, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Where your treasure is, your heart is also. And if you're not giving to the kingdom of God, you're not submitted to the king. And you may not know this. You are in big trouble. We won't come back no more, Pastor Mike. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you on the other side. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to preach the truth. And during the Obama years, only 3% of those who claimed to know Christ as king gave 10%, 3%, 3%, 3%. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. Pastor, you say I got to buy my way into the kingdom? No, I said you're giving it as an expression of your submission to the king. In the military, when I would not submit to my those in authority over me, I don't care if it was a petty officer or a chief, the guy right above me, they could court-martial me. We got to bring, it's not just, it's not just submitting to God, but we submit because we love him. I love. God so loved the world, he gave himself. The king gave him. This is not just any old homeboy died for you. Not anybody come lately died for you. Not anybody Jim Bob died for you. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords took your place on Calvary, went to hell, his soul did, and the third day he rose again for your justification. And how full of appreciation the church should be where we should shout his name from the rooftops. Want to know the power of a king? God said, let there be lights in the firmament above. And you know what happened? Right then and there, the universe was created. Now the earth was here, and the earth was covered in light. The heavens around the earth. People don't understand the earth is the center of all that God's doing. It's the center of God's focus. It's where his, his lineage is, his seed is, his sons and his daughters are on this planet. It's all of his attention for he knows every hair on our head. And he said, oh, I need some, I need some lights in the heavens for signs and wonders and dates and years and seasons. And so in one day, the king said, let there be lights in the firmament. And the universe was created, listen to this, with over two trillion galaxies. Two trillion galaxies with over a billion stars in each galaxy. And the day will come when he rose that all up 
and he recreates something that's a million times better. When the king spoke, Jesus, when the king spoke, he told the raging waves of the Sea of Galilee, shut up, and he told the wind, be still. It obeyed him. When he told the devils to go into the pigs of the Gadarene, they went into him and ran. When he said by name, because if he would not have said by name, every dead person would have came out of the tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the word of the king is just as powerful today as it was back then. And when you're submitted to the king, I am so convicted right now, I'm ready to weep. When you are submitted to the king out of faith and fear and love, not a word you speak will fall to the ground, but it will happen. This morning I came over. I was a little bit lazy. I had my bedroom slippers on. I decided I'm going to go out. I'm going to go over to the church, turn on the gas heater. Uh, um, Larry puts the wood in the stoves. Did that myself for many, many years, but thank God for help. So I got out of the truck, parked in the back, and put my feet, and I had a cup of coffee in one hand, opened the door, and I, my foot hit the snow. And whoop, down I go. Listen, my elbow went in between my side step. I got steps up into my pickup truck, my, my, my Ford Tundra. And when it did, I slammed it, put it down between, fell, and immediately felt like I broke my arm. Bam, boom. Oh, it's hurting so bad. Oh, God, I'm so stupid. But listen, because I know the authority I have in the name of Jesus. How many of you can guess what I did? I pushed, and I couldn't get out for a while because my feet wouldn't get grip, and all that pressure is on my elbow between my frame of my truck and my sideboard, and, I, and it's hurting. And, and, and it, it literally felt broken. I got up. And the first thing I did, I slapped my hands on my elbow in the name of the King of heaven and earth. And I spoke to it. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this arm to be healed. I command you to be made whole. In Jesus' name, Lord, heal everything I just damaged. I'm not no young buck anymore. I'm 63 years old. That put a lot of men out of the business for a while. Broken wrist, broken. I remember I broke my elbow here about five years ago. Never told anybody. Broke my right elbow. And I took the name of Jesus, the name of the King of heaven and earth. And I commanded my elbow. I said I commanded my elbow to be healed. When you begin to submit to authority you'll automatically begin to use it. I'm gonna say this again. When you begin to submit to authority, you'll automatically begin to use it. You won't even think, it'll become second nature. I jumped up, my arm was still hurting. I'm not lying to you. Came inside, did what I had to do. In the natural, Larry, I was hurting so bad that I didn't want to talk to you. I hope I didn't offend you. He was over here working on the fire. I came in. Walked over there, walked over there, because I knew I had to keep a hold of God. Walked out to my truck, had to struggle to get back in, got home, and I just had my hand on my elbow like this. You know, doing two things, believing, but yet feeling sorry for myself. You ever do it? I said, Lord, I thank you I'm healed. Double, you're a liar in the name of Jesus. I'm saying this to myself. In the name of Jesus, in the name, I'm healed, I'm healed. You know what? I'm healed, it's gone. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap. Well, I don't, I don't believe that. Well, I, I, I feel sorry for you. Because you're all on your own then. I'm not alone. When I submit to the king, he's there with me. He's on my side. I ain't got a tiger in the tank. I got a lion in the tank. His name is Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you that your word will never pass away and it will never fail. And I thank you for taking these realities and let them burn in our heart. Let them burn out all unbelief, all rebellion, all disobedience until you're 
wonderful bride comes into the role of perfect submission to you in Jesus name and everybody says amen we are aiming for perfect submission to Christ say to Christ not submission matter of fact you come and ask me what you should do you come and ask me what you should do you know guess what I'm gonna tell you what does the Bible say I don't get into your finances I don't get into the kind of car you drive I don't even get into the woman you married. I just say, make sure you heard from heaven. <laughs> make sure it's God, because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> just do what God says. It's written, the king has spoken. So, just close your eyes. I'm not going to have you raise your hands. It doesn't matter if I see your hands. Ask yourself this question. Are you in submission to the king? Are you really in submission to the king? And if you ask the king, you ask King Jesus, Lord, show me where I'm not submitting to you. You know, the devil, he wants you to keep rebelling against God. You know what? You'll never move in authority. You'll never move in power. You'll never have many answered prayers. The devil wants you to keep in rebellion because Satan is the author of rebellion to God. So I, I've been examining my heart even this morning. I said, Lord, I, there's rebellion in me. He said, I know, son, that's why you're not where you need to be yet spiritually. He said, start doing, dealing with the disobedience in your heart. Now, now, now you tell the truth, but you're not gonna make anybody else obey me. He said, you begin to submit yourself to me in every area. Don't give no place to the devil. He said, and you know what? I'll show up in your life like I've done all these years and even to a greater extent. So examine your heart right now and in your heart, ask the Father to forgive you. Now some of you ladies find strong and say, I don't want to submit to my husband. No, submit to him according to the will of God. I don't want to love my wife. Love your wife like Christ loves the church. Just, I'd like to really challenge, I'd like to believe I'd like to believe every one of you would do this. I know not everyone will right now. But I'd like to really, because you're going to have such an awesome testimony. Did you know that? When you begin to submit to the word of God and the will of God. You mean the old covenant, Pastor? Mo no, 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 not Leviticus. Not Deuteronomy, not Numbers. Uh, the, the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Romans, Corinthians. Thessalonians, Ephesians, Philippians, Book of Jude, Peter, you know, John. Submit to God and get ready for the miracles. Repent. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, Pray, seek my face. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. I will heal your life. I will heal your relationships. I will heal your home. I will heal your society. I would, God said, the king said, I will do it. All I want you to do is submit to me. That's all God says. For whose benefit? For your benefit. Amen. Now reach up and grab that. <laughs> reach up and grab that. Total obedience. Say, Lord, I want to I wanna be obedient. You know, I said something last week, which it bears repeating. Because I had a revelation of it. Jesus, at 30 years old, he goes down to John to get water baptized to fulfill the will of God. John puts him down. He comes back up. The voice of the Father thunders and says this, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Up to that moment, Jesus had not done one sermon or one miracle. God was pleased with him. Why do you think God was pleased with him? Because in all of those 30 years, he had never once disobeyed his Father. And that same Jesus who's nothing but pure obedience and submission to the Father now lives in me. Just dip into him.
happened to Jesus. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Dip into Jesus. He's in you. And take a hold. How many want to take a hold of perfect obedience? Perfect obedience. Woo, get ready for miracles. Get ready for miracles. Get ready for miracles. Tell somebody he's talking about me. So we're here to pray with you.